Welcome to the city. I'm Anthony Wilson, the public information officer for the city of San Angelo. And joining us today is another one of our city council members, the city council member for single member district two, Marty Self. Mr. Self, thanks for being with us. Oh, great. Uh, glad to be here. I'd like you just to uh, introduce yourself to uh, to our viewers, uh, talk a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, I'm, I, I am currently the councilman for sing, single member district two. I'm, uh, uh, I'm married. Uh, have two uh, great kids and and two uh, fantastic uh, grandkids and uh, lived here in San Angelo all my life and, and I love it here. Now you served on the city council uh, once before. Remind us when that was. Uh, that was with, uh, from 1989 to 1995, uh, six years and, and had a great time doing it then. What made you decide to, uh, to run for uh, at least one more term and maybe a few more terms on the council? Well, when I when I got to to looking at it, the the turnover and and it, there was definitely going to be four new council people, uh, uh, I I thought uh, with with my background of doing it before that uh, I, I could possibly lend some uh, expertise to it. And uh, uh, like I said, I've I've always loved San Angelo, and I wanted to give back to San Angelo uh, some of the things that I've got. Were there any particular current issues that are going on with the, the city or the community or the city council that that helped to spark that interest again to run? Well, th there were primarily two. One uh, was the water issue. It's, it's, it's a big concern to me and, and, and as, as well as everyone in San Angelo. Uh, and then two, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, roads. Uh, uh, they they were in dire need of, of starting to get some repairs. So those were the two main issues. Are those issues are they are they ones that you uh, uh, had to work on when you served on the council previously? I mean, are those sort of ongoing issues uh, uh, during that span? Well, the, the water's always been an ongoing issue. It was uh, in in uh, 1989 or 1990 was when we uh, won the won the first lawsuit on the Hickory. Uh, Water fields and and uh, so water's always been a, a an issue of forefront. But uh, back then uh, we we set money aside for infrastructure and 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 road seal coat programs. So that wasn't as big of an issue as it is now. So so why do you think the the streets are now a bigger issue than they were then? Is, is it is that part of the cost cutting measures maybe that the city had in the past uh, during lean times? Yeah, I believe so. You know, I, I'm not for sure when it was taken out of, of the budget, but uh, it had to be because of, of, you know, having to make cuts to, to, to balance the budget. You know, we have to, council people have to make sure that, the, that they don't spend more than they take in, and, and uh, uh, there's tough decisions that have to be made, and I'm sure that was tough when it was done, but they, they took it out, and so now we're working to get it back in. In your mind, what needs to be done in order to improve the infrastructure and streets in particular in San Angelo? Well, the first thing is we have to have an, a, a revolving uh, maintenance program uh, where, where every street gets seal coated uh, every seven to eight years. That, that's they found is, is about as long as they can go without, without getting a new facelift. And, and because it's been taken out of the budget, you know, there's a few streets that we've lost that, that we're going to have to uh, just basically tear out and redo and and then uh, just get them, just start getting them seal coated every seven years to, to maintain them. You mentioned about the water earlier, so I wanted to go ahead and, and, and talk about that. In your mind, what has the city done well in regards to pursuing water sources and what more needs to be done? Well. Um, Hickory is one thing we've done well. Uh, it it uh, uh, might have should have been done a little quicker, but uh, it, it's done, and 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 so uh, we've got the groundwork done for that, and and uh, that that's a primary deal. And and then uh, things that that we need to continue to do is 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 number one, just pray for rain. Uh, you know, we, we we need rain and we need runoff. Uh, that's uh, that's our first solution, and and uh, and secondly, the the city council and, and what all we went through in the last several meetings, uh, uh, the water partnership ha has come out to the forefront and work with other cities to to go get other viable water supplies. Uh, that's second, and then we're, we're working on a few things uh, behind the scenes that will capture some water that that we can uh, that possibly we can use to. Uh, 
to to continue to help our water supply. So we, we, we've got to be proactive and we've got to go after water. That's our number one uh, thing. You mentioned about the West Texas Water Partnership, which involves not only San Angelo, but Midland and Abilene as well. In your mind, why is that so critical to, to San Angelo's future as it relates to water? Well, I, I, I believe that's a real important factor because uh, three people or, or three cities can do it uh, more effectively than one city. Uh, you know, uh, if, if we were to go have to go to a, 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 far, uh, a far piece, uh, a far distance to get water, you know, three cities can, can split that cost a lot easier than just one city by itself. So uh, there, there's strength in numbers. You know, one of the th interesting things is I uh, heard yesterday that Abilene is launching a plan to pump uh, treated affluent water back into one of its main water sources. Is that something that you think could and should be looked at here in San Angelo? Um, I think we're going to have to look at it. Uh, w when we mention it, people just immediately turn up their nose and think, uh, oh my gosh, what are we doing? But uh, I, I think we're going to have to look at the possibility of doing it uh, in, in such a way that we can use it to, to, water, uh, to water yards, to water parks, uh, and, and, and to help, uh, to help our, our treated water last longer. Of course, as we've mentioned, you've served on the council before, so you know the reams of background information that council members receive every week and that they have to go over in order to prep themselves for a city council member or a city council meeting. Realistically, how long do you think it's going to take you, even though you've served on the council before, to get up to speed on all the issues that the council is dealing with so you feel really comfortable in, in working with those issues? Well, I, uh, with serving on it for six years before has helped a lot and, and I think I'm a, I think I'm slowly getting up to speed, uh, you know, and, and just about the time you, you think you've got it, you know, something triggers and you think, oh my gosh, what, where'd that come from? And, and I'm, not, I'm not as prepared as I thought I was. So uh, it's, uh, uh, I think it's always a learning curve there that you, that you gotta get through, but uh, I'm, I'm getting pretty close right now. With four new members on the council, and of course Mayor Morrison being new in that particular role, does that complicate at all, the, the council as a whole, sort of getting up to speed on issues? Oh yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, you, you, you take a new mayor uh, by itself. I, I, when I served uh, before, I, I served three two-year terms. Every year we had a different mayor. I mean, every two years we had a different mayor, uh, three mayors, and, and just the way the mayors uh, ran the meeting and, and uh, what they expected, that in itself is a learning curve that you have to, to fight through. And, and so, uh, uh, that that's one, and then having the new ones, uh, the new council members, uh, yeah, there's there's it's it's there. What are the issues that your constituents are contacting you most about? Uh, primarily the, the the normal stuff that that uh, that they did when I was on the council before, uh, stop signs. Uh, uh, you know, what are a lot of a lot more people are concerned about water now than they used to. That that's always on the forefront, but you know. Uh, stop signs, yield signs, street repair, and, and things such as that. When you get those sort of questions, those sort of micro questions about issues that are particular to maybe their street or their block or, or even their home, how do, you, how do you deal with those issues? I mean, do you try to work those uh, directly or do you, do you forward those people to city staff or how do you approach those? I, I try to work them. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, sometimes I ask them if they've, if they've actually tried to go through the through the process themselves, but for the most part, it's a lot easier for a council person to call and see what's going on rather than a, rather than than a constituent. So I, I try to I try to do it uh, as much as I can. Now, as we're talking, you've been through several city council meetings uh, since you, your election. Do you note any differences between maybe the meetings or even council service uh, from what you previously recalled? Um, there's definitely a difference in, in the length of time so far. Uh, when, when I served before, our, uh, most of our meetings lasted about three hours. Uh, we haven't had one that has been out in three hours. Uh, length of length of time was really caught me off guard and really surprised me there. They uh, going to six o'clock in the evenings uh, has been a has, has been a real change from the way it used to be. Why do, you, why do you think that is? And do you think that the council needs to get back to having shorter meetings? 
Well, I, I think right now with, with, with four uh, new council people, there's a, there's a lot of new things that is being thrown in front of us, and, and that's serving is, is making meetings uh, last longer. And, and the uh, 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 when I was on the council before, we met every week instead of every other week. And so uh, that in itself lengthens meetings when you're meeting twice to, twice a month rather than four times a month. And, uh, I, I think they'll shorten up some. They won't be three hours, but uh, they'll, they'll get better as, as time goes on. What's the most challenging thing that you've found about uh, serving on the city council a second time? Uh, it, it, as far as the meetings, uh, one of the challenges is remember we're being filmed. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you always need to keep that in mind so you, you, you don't uh, you don't do something that that. Uh, Maybe you shouldn't, uh, although you don't normally do anything like that anyway. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it, it's getting back into it. It's all kind of been a challenge, uh, but it's been a great challenge. Well, that was going to sort of be my next question. Is what's most enjoyable? What have you enjoyed most about this second time on the council? I have had fun so far. Uh, people ask me uh, walking down the street or, or when I go to lunch or something, they'll say, uh, "Man, what you know? Did you, did you realize what you were getting into?" I realized what I was getting into, and I have had fun. It's been enjoyable, and and uh, uh, it's been uh, uh, it's been great. And and it I know it's only been a couple of months, but uh, I, I hope it continues to be as much fun as it's been right now. Are people surprised when you tell them how much fun you're having, uh, given the fact that y'all have dealt with some controversial issues? Oh yeah, they they uh, uh, they they at first think I'm being facetious, but. Uh, uh, and then after we talk a little while, they, they say, you know, you're serious. And I said, yeah, I'm serious. It, it's, it's been fun and it's been enjoyable. And, and as long as it's been as much fun as it is right now, uh, someone's going to have to work to get me out of it because I like it. We're talking with Councilman Marty Self, and we'll be back in just a moment. But first, we're going to spotlight another outstanding city employee. Yes, sir, I'm Melvin Lance Allen. I've worked for the city of San Angelo for three years, and I'm a level two shelter assistant here at the, city, at the, at the shelter. We process dogs every day, and uh, you know, we, we, we put them up, and we try to save as many as we can, but I mean, we get like a thousand dogs a month, so we can't save them all. And a lot of them, they bring in, the, the, they're sick. I mean, so then we have to, to euthanize. Well, we take him and we weigh him, and then we give him all his shots, and we worm him, and we uh, spray him down with flea spray, and uh, and then we assess the dog. That way, you know, we know where to put the dog on, on either. We're, we've got uh, dog rabies, and then we got dog isolation, and then we have all the rows in the back. And then you assess the animal, and then you put it where it needs to go. Well, it's a good job, and if you love animals, I mean, it, this is the perfect place for you, you know. And it takes a person that lo likes animals to, to, to work here. Uh, I have three dogs, and one of them is named Sarah, one of them is named Quigley, and the other one is named Sissy. I love everything about them. I mean, like one day they got out, and I had to take off to go put them up. I mean, you know. So, I mean, I, I don't want to lose my dog. I'm really surprised at how many people just get rid of their pets. I mean, because, it, you know, to me, a pet is worth having. And if, if, you, if you get a pet, you need to take care of it. You know, it's just, and a, just a lot of people, they just don't care, I guess. You need to get your pet spayed or neutered because that helps with, like, it helps with the community. You know, it'll help uh, the dog population, which is overrun. I mean, we get like a thousand dogs a month. And we only have 120 kennels, so that'll give you some kind of idea of what what we have to do. Extremely easy to come attached to, to dogs. I mean, you know, especially when you work with them every single day. I mean, and there, there's a lot of them that, that, that you get attached to and, and you don't want to put down. And you try to get them adopted. And, you know, we have a lot of, uh, of, uh, of like Sadie's and Paul's, they come and rescue a lot of our dogs and that helps us out a lot. I mean, and you know, we will tell them, you know, this is a good dog here. Can you try to help us get this dog adopted? And they do. 
Julie's a very good boss, and, and you know, if you ask her anything, she knows everything about dogs. And and uh, and uh, she's a she's the backbone of this shelter. If you love animals, you, you, you it's good to work here. I mean, because it, it you know, just animals are good. I mean, you know, and and animals have feelings, you know, just like a human being does. You you might not think they do, but they do. You know, that's just like that. They'll they'll talk to you. I mean, that, you, they bark at you, but you know, they're, that's the way they're they're talking, I guess. You always want to show the dogs affection because, you know, you wouldn't want someone treating you like dirt, so you you really don't want to treat the animals like dirt. How many people get rid of their dogs? I mean, because, I mean, you'd be surprised how many people just say, well, and then they make up all kinds of excuses, you know, that they can't afford to feed them. Well, it doesn't take that much to feed a dog, you know. Fish and hunt, that's about, that's about, that's about all I do, really. Every day. Every day's good. You gotta like your job, you know. And, I mean, and if you come to, to work with a negative attitude, it's not gonna do no one no good. I mean, it's just, it doesn't help nobody. You know, that's why I'm always joking around and kidding around with people. Maybe a little too much, I don't know. But I don't think so. No one complains. <laughs>and increased uh, housing problems. Uh, uh, I, I really think from talking to people that, that the impact is not going to be as great as we thought it first was. Uh, I think it'll stay further north. I think we're right on the south of, end of it. So uh, uh, I think we're going to be able to, to get our way through it. Uh, it's just uh, it's, it's having a real negative uh, uh, impact on our housing and that, and that kind of hurts. What are the opportunities that something like that poses? Well, do you mean the housing or? or no, the I'm talking about just, just the, I guess, the economic development that comes along with something like the Klein Shell development. Well, it, it helps. Uh, you know, anytime we have economic development, uh, it, it spurs on growth, and, 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 and growth is, is good for, for any city because I'm a firm believer uh, a city never stays the same. It's either growing or, or, or it's going backwards. And so it helps us continue to go forward. Sales taxes uh, helps us with that. Uh, and, and uh, you know, fixing to get about six new motels, so that helps. Uh, but uh, the, the economic impact's good, but, but uh, uh, along with it, there's always a negative. We just got to be aware of that. Your company uh, sells and installs and services uh, fire suppression systems. So you do uh, work uh, quite often with our development services uh, department. How do you think that background is going to help you when it comes to dealing with sort uh, development issues within our community? Oh, I, I think it gives me a leg up uh, because I'm, I'm already know a lot of the things we need to. To, to move forward and and and, and develop, so uh, I, I think uh, that that helps a lot. How do you assess the the job that the development services uh, department is doing? Because they they sometimes become a, a whipping boy when uh, when folks don't happen to get their way when it comes to development issues. Well, they they do, and they always will be. Uh, that's the nature of the beast. I think they do a great job. I think all our city services do do a fantastic job, and and. Uh, they really uh, uh, help help the city. You've talked about infrastructure, you've talked about water. What are some of the other top issues that you think that this council is gonna be uh, confronting over the course of your two-year term? Well, uh, those are the primary two, uh, you know. Uh, we, we need, to, uh, we, we need to, to stay on top of those two uh, and, and then, uh, uh, the third one it might be there I'm not for sure right now but when it uh, when it hits we just need to make sure that we're proactive and move forward 
Of course, you just now uh, passed a budget, and it, it seemed uh, from the outside looking in, it was kind of a vanilla budget that cost pretty much stayed the same with the exception of uh, some pay increases for some of the lowest paid uh, employees and some of our civil servants. Is, is that a good approach, do you think, uh, in this time, just to try to keep, uh, uh, keep those costs the same uh, uh, until we know for certainty what's going to be happening with our, with our economic development and, and our water situation? I, I think it's a smart play. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, need to, uh, we need to set back and just, since we're just now starting to feel the, 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 the first impact of the client shell, we, we need to uh, uh, see, see exactly where we're going to go and, and before we uh, jump off and do something that uh, we may have to redo or undo. Well, what, are you, what are maybe the, uh, the things that you remember most about oil booms and how they impacted San Angelo in the past? Um, they, they, in, in the past, they, they basically really impacted it the same way it is now. Uh, you know, uh, back in the, the late 70s, that when, when there was a big influx of oil uh, boom there, it, it happened the same way it did now, uh, middle in Odessa, San Angelo. You, you couldn't get a motel room if, if you came into that area. You had to, to, to find another means. Uh, we, we do a lot of out-of-town work and we, we'd always have to travel back and forth as, as well as people would have to do the same thing here. Uh, you know, I, 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 you have to like it, but uh, spikes are never good. Uh, it, constant growth rather than jumping up and rescinding and jumping up. Uh, uh, I, I've always thought just constant steady growth is the best way to go, but uh, you know, we, we play with the cards we're dealt. As the council member for single member district two, you represent the Lakeview area. Are there issues that are particular to Lakeview that, that you think you're going to have to be addressing? You know, I really don't think so. Uh, you know, the, it, it, there used to be uh, quote unquote Lakeview area and, and, and uh, I really think we, we've, uh, our, our city has grown to be San Angelo. Uh, uh, we don't uh, we don't have any other really uh, unique things that affect us that don't affect the city uh, as a whole, and the city as a whole doesn't have things that, that uh, affect them that don't affect Lakeview. Uh, uh, I, I, it, it, we're, I think we're one big happy family right now. You of course uh, have your uh, predecessor in that seat is now our mayor, Dwayne Morrison. He was obviously a very popular councilman uh, in single member district two. Is that somewhat of a challenge following up someone who was, who was so popular in that seat? Oh yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of scary uh, because uh, he was so popular in, in uh, uh, the Lakeview area, but, but he was so popular that, uh, that he was popular all over San Angelo and, and, and became our mayor. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little scary having to follow someone that's that popular. Right now, the city council is awaiting some uh, the final drafts of some comprehensive planning documents, both for uh, Lake Nasworthy and for downtown. Wondering what your assessment is for, for both of those opportunities to do more with development at Nasworthy and in the downtown area. I think those are two big assets that, that the San Angelo has. Uh, we have a very unique downtown area. There's been a lot of people that have spent a lot of time sweat and blood to, 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 to keep that growing. Uh, we, need to, we need to be supportive of the city and, and help that area grow as much as we can. And you know, the only asset that's probably bigger than downtown is, is, is Lake Nasworthy. People come from all over to, to, uh, to, to, to camp and boat and, and stay out at Lake Nasworthy and, and the, uh, the comprehensive plan that, that, that they introduced to us is, is fantastic and, and we need to move forward in those areas, both those areas. You know, uh, particularly at Nasworthy, there's some concern by some of the homeowners out there that some of the commercial development will encroach upon their residential neighborhoods. How do you, how do you prevent that sort of thing from happening and balancing uh, their wants and their needs with, uh, with the rest of the community? Um, you turn it over to Rodney. <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, you, you have to be mindful of, of, of residential areas and, and you can't let commercial growth in, in, encroach in them. Uh, and so you have, to, uh, uh, you have to build buffers 
and, and, and it'll be our you know it'll be our responsibility to make sure those buffers uh, get put into place so that the residential people uh, uh, the residences aren't encroached upon on October the 15th you're going to be having a nighttime meeting uh, of the City Council what do you expect from that I mean do you, I know it's an effort to try to have more people come to the City Council meeting do you think that that will actually in fact occur I think we at first it will uh, I, I'm very much in support of nighttime meetings uh, but I, I'm, I, I hope that I'm wrong but I feel after the new wears off we may find out that attendance drops uh, but uh, if it does then we can look at other avenues but I'm excited about it I, I think it'll be uh, uh, it'll be refreshing if it were solely your decision how often would the council be meeting in the evenings uh, probably once a quarter like we're planning on uh, until we see if it does work if, if it works and, and, and we have really good turnout and, and a tennis doesn't fall, I'd be supportive of once, uh, you know, uh, one out of every two. Uh, you know, whatever we can do to, to, to get our, uh, our, our constituents in, in, uh, involved, uh, we, we should try. And what's your experience as far as the reasons that people come to city council meetings? Is it because they're necessarily interested in what the council is doing? Is it because some issue is touching them in some sort of personal way? Primarily, most of the time, it's because an issue is touching them in a personal way. Uh, you know, uh, definitely with our, our meeting starting in the morning, you know, people can't take off work just to come down, just to just to hear us uh, taking care of business. Uh, so most of the time, the, the you know, it's because there's an issue that's touching them. If people want to get in contact with you, especially your constituents, what's the best way for them to go about that? Uh, it, it would uh, be through my cell phone, 276-1589. Two, uh, and they can always uh, uh, email me, uh, and uh, they can call the uh, uh, city manager's office, and they, they can get in touch with me and have them uh, call them. And, and for those who don't know, your uh, your city email address is marty.self at COSA, as in City of San Angelo, TX.US. That's all right. All right. You got it memorized. Very much so. <laughs> We've been talking with Councilmember Marty Self, and we hope you'll join us for the next episode of The City.